Hi, I'm Don Seagal. This video series is about the new Thunder Tiger Pro 46 engine. It's a new design and the old Thunder Tiger Pro 46 was a well-proven engine. The Thunder Tiger Pro 40 is the engine that is used for AMA 424 Sport Quickie Racing and it's also the preference of most RC Pro Club 40 racers. Um, these will turn a 9.6 at around 16,500 RPMs um, and they're good running engines if you treat them right and if you especially if you clean them before you run them and make sure everything is set up properly. Uh, some guys don't like to take engines apart if you're going to race, you have to get used to dealing with taking engines apart and that kind of thing. In 2015, RC Pro will have a racing class called RC Pro Club 46. This will still be run as Club 40 via the AMA 540B document. For the two pole course where airplane and engine combinations are in the under 100 mile per hour average. I've got a new Thunder Tiger Pro 46 and all I've done to it is take it out and check out a couple of things but it's fresh and I'm going to show you how I prepare the engine and a couple of little details about it. <clears throat> This is the new engine. It's a very nice looking engine. It does have some differences between the old Pro 46 um, being that it's a new model. The first thing you'll recognize is it has a couple of additional strengthening and cooling fans on the front of the crankcase. The next thing is it's a four bolt engine like the OS 46 AX. Um, another new feature is that instead of having a cinch bar to hold the carburetor on, the carburetor is now held with two screws. Another thing is it has a plastic back plate. The plastic back plate is actually of interest to us. Come back to that in just a minute. The muffler is a new design. It has an angle on the front and it's a different shape than the old muffler was. Uh, but it has the same mounting pattern. So theoretically you can use the old muffler on a new, new engine. Uh, but for Club 40 racing, um, you have to use the stock muffler. Another difference between the two engines is that the mounting lugs are significantly bigger on the new engine. Uh, they still have the same mounting pattern and the engine still fits in the same lug mounting pattern. So that's convenient because you can switch a 46 out for a 40. Uh, with no problem. Now in terms of the back plate, since I've already had this engine apart, these screws aren't tight. If you're going to use this engine on a Quickie 500, um, just for fun, since the Thunder Tiger Pro 40 is the current engine for AMA 424 Sport Quickie, 
This is the back plate mount with the integrated back plate from Jet. And this one actually has a piston relief. The one he sells that you can use on the OS 46 engines needs that piston relief for the skirt. And if we put the back plate on, we see it has the same mounting pattern as the Pro 40. So with the back plate mounted on the engine, everything looks fine, except there's one little problem. The piston hits the um, back plate. So you can't use this particular back plate on this engine. Dub may create a um, back plate mount that works for this engine at some point in the future. Um, there's not any real reason to right now. And there are alternatives to the to the back plate mount with the integrated back plate. And those are mounts like this. Daryl Katie com has one that's KQE17. It's a little hard to find on the website, um, but if you look under, I believe it's racing accessories, um, you can find it there. I'll put a link in the video for it. Um, but with this, you put the back plate back in place. So with this style of back plate mount, it fits fine. You can mount it on a Quickie 500 or you can mount it in a sport plane uh, using one of these radi radial type four bolt conforming mounts. So I've put the back plate back on the engine. The one issue with the Thunder Tiger Pro 46 and the Thunder Tiger Pro 40 as well is that the engine mounting lugs are drilled to fit a three millimeter bolt. A 632 bolt will not go into the um, holes that are provided. So Things like the Jet Thunder Tiger Pro 40 mount um, use 632 screws and when I'm mounting engines, especially in nylon composite mounts, I like to tap the mounts, but I like to tap them with 632s. So I'm going to make one modification to this engine before I tear it down. I'm going to drill out those holes. The holes in a OS 46 are about 0 0.144. Uh, in some other engines, they go up to about 0 0.165. Okay, we want a hole that's between 145 thousandths and 165 thousandths and a 964th bit is 0 0.140. Um, that's a little tight, but I don't like to make the holes any bigger than I need to. 
and a 632 is a, about a hundred and thirty-seven thousandths. So you have about three thousandths extra um, with the 932nd. And you can go to, I mean, with the 964th, you can go to a 532nds and you'll have a little bit bigger holes for your engines and they'll actually be closer in size. <clears throat> but a 1 8 inch bit goes through the holes and the 964th is just a tiny bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is stuff some paper towel into the carburetor intake and into the exhaust to make sure no metal gets in the engine. So the engine's prepped for me to drill the holes and one thing I'm going to do before I drill those holes is put down some paper towel to catch the metal and now I just simply drill the hole and we'll do another one so I've drilled out the holes and the 632 goes right in and I have metal on the case. And when we get all that off, so you make sure you get no metal shavings in the engine, especially if you're not cleaning it before you run it. And I take my paper towels and throw them away. And then get more paper towels. And I take out the plugs. This is the Jet Thunder Tiger Pro 40 mount. Uh, Dub made some of these for us to use in a proposed class called Q40 Sport. Q40 Sport didn't take off. And don't know if he's still making these mounts, but we can try putting the engine in one just to see that we do have the same mounting pattern as the Thunder Tiger Pro 40. So here's the engine mounted on the jet mount. Um, if 
for the Thunder Tiger Pro 40 and uh, it's fully compatible. Uh, if you have a one of these mounts in a Q40, the bigger lugs may require you to open the uh, engine opening a little bit, uh, depending on whether or not you're using an airframe that has a uh, engine cover or if you just have an open hull for it. But these jet mounts are really nice mounts, uh, even for sport planes. And I actually have some, so if you need one, uh, let me know. Now we're going to start taking a look at the engine. Um, first thing I'm going to do is take off the back plate again. Okay, the back plate has a piston skirt relief. And it also has a couple of little um, curved areas. That's different than the Thunder Tiger Pro 40. The Thunder Tiger Pro 40 only has a piston relief. Um, and um, so I don't know if these are for fuel flow or, or exactly what the purpose is, but the back plate mount is plastic and it has an embedded piece of metal in it. I'll be interested to see how that looks after the engine's run. Another difference between the old Pro 46 and the new one is that the carburetor is bolted on. And it has a gasket that goes underneath the carburetor instead of having an o-ring like they used to have so the carburetor assembly is similar but different from the old 40 and 46 and you can see it's got a uh, pretty sizable contact area so and the way it's made, it has a little lip that fits down in a, a, a uh, groove around the edge. So it should be just fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take off the thrust washer and get a look at that because I haven't actually taken a look at that yet. One thing that's different between this one and the old ones is that the old ones used a collet. This one has a flat key to hold it in place, which means you're not going to have trouble getting the thrust washer off. And if you're changing bearings or taking, taking the crankshaft out, that makes it less of an issue. Thunder Tiger includes a glow plug. I'm not a fan of their glow plug, so you may want to go with something different, like an OS um, 3 or 8. And I haven't seen the inside of the engine yet, so I really haven't seen the the, the the piston and cylinder. So with the head off, I can see into the engine, and of course it's got a pinch at the top because this is a ABN engine, 
it's supposed to have a new uh, formulation of nickel on it, but it's still a it's still a nickel plated cylinder. So what I'm going to do is turn it, and the head chim pops out. And the cylinder looks very similar to the old cylinders. And I'm going to take the piston out. Before I take the piston out, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to make a mark using an X-Acto knife so that I know what's the front and the back. It's just a tiny mark. It won't hurt the performance of the engine at all. And it makes it easy to get the piston back in the right orientation because if you change the orientation of the piston after you've broken it in, it's not going to be the same fit. So the piston just comes right out. One thing I forgot to mention is there is a pin that's a locator for the cylinder. And uh, when you put the cylinder in, you just locate it. I'm not going to push it all the way down because I don't have the piston to push it out. But that's how the cylinder is located. And it'll keep you from getting it the wrong way. And one thing I want to see is what the difference is between the 40 cylinder and the 46 cylinder. Because on the old Pro 46, the cylinder would fit in the 40s, which was an area of contention because um, it was possible to put a 46 cylinder in a 40 engine. Now, they both look like they're 959 or 960, so I believe the Pro 40 we're going to try fitting the Pro 40 in here. The Pro 40 fits in the 46 and the 46 fits in the 40. So that's not a change in the cylinder. Now, don't go putting 46 pistons and cylinders in your uh, 40 engines. Nobody likes people who push the envelope like that. If you're a sport flyer, it doesn't really matter. You could do it. So, <clears throat> the bearings feel nice and smooth. Uh, one thing I want to see is how easily the uh, crankshaft comes out because it usually comes out pretty easy on the Pro 40s, especially after you've cleaned them. One thing I'm going to do because of the fins on the back of the engine is I'm going to make sure that I'm only tapping against the back surface. The crankshaft has a nice look to it. Let's compare it to the uh, Pro 40. One immediate difference I see is that the opening is not as big. That may mean that this 46 is not even as strong as the 40s. Uh, testing will tell. Um, another thing it has is a bevel where the crank pin is. I assume that's for the way it fits in the case. May actually be because of the piston skirt. Um, maybe so that the piston skirt 
Because the piston skirt is longer than a Pro 40 piston skirt. So now I've got the engine fully apart. What I'm going to do is clean it in lacquer thinner to make sure there's no metal in the bearings. And then I'll reassemble it. And then after I've reassembled it, uh, I'm going to put it on the test stand and break it in. And I'll show that in another video. Um, and then I'll do a performance video um, of the 46 engines that I'm evaluating. And I'll also be able to compare them to the 40 engines. So I'm going to be doing videos on the Magnum XLS 46, the Evolution 46 NT, or sorry, the Evolution 46 NX, uh, the ASP 46A2, and the OS 46AX2. So you'll have those videos if you want to check those out. <clears throat> I have a container with lacquer thinner. I buy my lacquer thinner from Lowe's or Home Depot. In gallon cans because you go through it. I mean, this is a 24 ounce cup and I have it almost to the 24 ounce um, area. So, what I'm going to do first is just drop the engine in and the next thing I'm going to do is put on gloves because I don't want my hands in lacquer thinner. I used to not be as aware of this, but uh, one of my friends pointed out that I was using my bare hands in a video I made on cleaning another engine and uh, that concerned him because he knows the dangers of things like acetone and um, lacquer thinner. You can develop sensitivities to it and it can damage your nervous system. The bearings feel pretty smooth. Of course, now that a little bit of oil has been replaced from or removed from, they're even freer. So, what I'm going to do now is take the crankshaft and clean it. And you can just put this stuff in the lacquer thinner and leave it for an hour or so. I wouldn't leave it in the thinner for more than over an hour. Uh, when you're deep gumming engines, uh, it may take longer, but for a new engine, that's fresh like this, um, shouldn't have to um, clean it very much. You just want to make sure you get any particles off of it. I use Dextron um, ATF fluid for lubing my engines when I when I clean them and and uh, reassemble them. What I'm gonna do now is slide the crankshaft back in. It should go in easily if I get it aligned properly. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in the bearings and on the crankshaft and before I assemble that I'm going to go ahead and clean the piston and cylinder while I have the gloves on because I don't like to have the gloves on while I'm actually assembling the engine.
you don't need to clean the carburetor uh, on a new engine, you know, on a gummed up one that's stuck. You may have to do some cleanup, but that's a different topic. Um, so now I'm going to take, I'm going to move the uh, lacquer thinner out of the way now that the piston and cylinder are cleaned. And just for safety, I'm going to go ahead and wash the head because it could have some shavings on it and the thrust washer. And since I've already oiled the, the rear bearing, even though the front bearing is enclosed, I'm going to go ahead and put some oil on it. Now we slide it back together. One thing you have to do while you're sliding the piston in, sliding the shaft in, is make sure you get the front And to make sure that the crankshaft is fully seated, I use a piece of three quarter inch dowel and I lightly tap it. because you don't want to damage the bearings. So it spins nice and free. Uh, the bearings look better than the bearings did in the uh, original Pro 40s and even maybe the later ones. Um, it is a metal retainer. Uh, some people pr prefer plastic retainers and rcbearings.com has stainless steel replacement sets of bearings and um, when I need to change bearings in Thunder Tiger Pro 40s or Pro 46s I use um, their bearing, their stainless steel bearing so I don't have to worry about rust. So now what I need to do is put the piston back in. There's nothing special about the piston it has the normal cutouts and what I'm going to do is look for my little mark that I made with my exacto knife because the crankshaft is symmetrical and it needs to go in this way and it can be useful to use an Allen wrench to help you get the connecting rod onto the pin. So you put the crank pin back on, or so you put the con rod back on the uh, crank pin and then you orient the cylinder and you gently slide it back in place and you get the piston aligned and now we have the piston and cylinder in place and what I'm going to do now is put the head shim back on and put the head back on. You may want to mark your head so that you know what is the front and the rear because 
it does matter when you reconfigure the engine about break-in. Uh, once you've broken in the engine, you want it to be the same. Okay, I just tightened the head bolts to approximately where they need to go. I'm going to use the supplied wrench and tighten them to where they're just barely a little bit snugger. And I did that in a cross bolt pattern. And because I don't have a torque wrench, I'll put a link in the video to um, a one you can get for around 60 bucks. It's a feel thing. You don't want to strip your head bolts, but they need to be tight enough. The one thing I forgot to do while I was putting the piston and cylinder in was to lube it. So I'm leaving it now and it has a reasonably nice pinch at the top not too tight should be relatively easy break in and I put the back plate back on making sure I get it oriented properly Now with back plate screws, these are short screws that don't have a lot of thread. You especially have to be careful about stripping these. So tighten them down till they're snug. And then tighten them to where they're reasonably tight, but just be careful not to strip them. I have a little set of sockets that has a T handle. I picked these up in the automotive store. I wish I'd bought a bunch of them because um, they're really nice and I'll, you can tighten the head down. And now it feels good. Then we'll put the car back on. Now I may use some red Loctite to hold the carburetor on because I don't know how these screw-on carburetors are going to work. I'll find out when I get it on the test stand. Engine feels good. Now one issue that Thunder Tiger Pro 40's had, and I want to see if it has it the same issue here was it could be hard to get the, the muffler bolts on with the front needle valve at the angle it's at. No problem. So since this engine is prepped for break-in, I'm going to go ahead and put the muffler gasket on because I can mount engines on my test stand without having to take the muffler off. Push your screws through the gasket make sure the gasket's fully in the proper place.
So now I tighten down the muffler bolts. They need to be reasonably tight. Once again, you don't want to strip them. And so there we have the engine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount a break-in prop on the engine and flip it over. This is the break-in prop I use. It's a 7.8 by 6 by APC and it's carbon fiber. Uh, so it doesn't put a load, too much of a load on the engine. And one of the nice things about it is it's balanced. I check the balance every time I test run it, even though it can't hit anything because I want to be sure I have a balanced prop on it. And I also use a Dubro spinner nut. And I use an Allen wrench to tighten the prop down and pull it through compression because I've got oil in it and it feels good. And if you like your fingers, you won't flip APC props that have a sharp edge on them because this is just a test prop. I just smoothed off the edges when I was balancing it, but I'm not going to flip it with my hands and take a chance on injuring my hands. That's an introduction to the um, Thunder Tiger Pro 46. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention is that the Max One Piece muffler is also compatible with this engine. It's the same muffler bolt pattern as the OS and the um, most of the other 46 engines. And I'm not going to put it on, but um, the Max mufflers are nice because they don't come apart. They're not allowed in they're not allowed in Club 40, but for sport flying. Um, if you want a reliable muffler that you don't want to have, want to have to worry about it coming apart, uh, the Max One Piece is a good muffler. Actually, I am going to flip it over for you so you can hear how it sounds. Now I'll put the engine on the test stand. I use, I use a PSP manufacturing test stand on a pole that fits in the socket in the ground. And... Um, that's it for part one of this series on this engine. And um, you'll see links in the video to various things, including things like my drill bit charts, Android application and uh, RC calculators, Android application. Um, check those out. If you get a chance, check out RC pro uh, visit club 40 racing.com. Uh, you can get to the RC Pro Club 46 class there. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this engine compares to the previous generation and to the Thunder Tiger Pro 46. 
that small opening on the crankshaft kind of makes me think it's not going to have much of a performance gain over the 40, but I'll find out. So thanks for watching. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Uh, many more videos to come. So happy flights and happy landings.